this is an important, exciting setup page for the, your campaign setup. So I'm glad that you're watching this video to get a little bit more information. There's two sections here. There's the one that helps you set some campaign goals, which are predetermined, that allows your campaign to be more optimized on the initial back end to just perform better based off of how you want it to perform. And I'll go through each of those. The second section is just showcasing the two different options that you have for geofence targeting. One is addressable geofencing, which basically takes a list of addresses that you upload with the CSV file and automatically grabs the property lines. And then there's drawn geofences, where you can actually look at a map and put pins uh, on, on a map that connect to create a polygonal uh, geofence around a specific location. The technology behind them is slightly different and the pros and cons of those, I'll go over at the end of this video as well too. So if you have questions about that, definitely either skip ahead or stick around. So the first section with the goals are, we have five predetermined goals. The first one is to get more website traffic. So this is just to try to optimize to get more people to your website as the primary focus. The second one is one of two options to actually have physical conversions. And when I talk about physical conversions, that means that you have the opportunity to set up a conversion zone, maybe around your physical brick and mortar location or another location that uh, you want to track somebody that has seen the ad and then has actually entered your, uh, your conversion zone. The first one is to get for more foot traffic to your default uh, conversion zones in your locations. Those are located in the profile. So if you go into your profile and go under locations, and if you're selected as a brick and mortar location, you actually have the opportunity to set up the location that you want to track for when people actually come into your location. So here we have our parent company for ethics office for this location. You can select multiple by adding the zones just like you would our drawn geofences. But this again is basically going to set up the zones to say, hey, they saw the ad and then we're going to track and say and tell you in their reporting dashboard that they actually came to your location as well too. The other thing that you can do is get more foot traffic to another location. We made the default location in your profiles very easy because most companies are going to have the same default locations. It's going to be your same locations that you want people to go to, right? But there are some instances where you want to be able to track on specific campaigns that they're going to go to other locations. They're going to um, maybe go to a voting booth and you want to track that or an event or maybe you have um, you're an agency and you have multiple organizations with different locations that you want to track for conversions. In that case, you would select here and then we would provide you in a couple of the next steps of the campaign setup, the option to set up specific locations just for this campaign that you're running. And then again, we'll report on the conversions that you have. You can uh, toggle between these two. So you can actually have both selected. You can also have get more traffic selected. You can deselect one and everything. You don't have to pick just one goal. The uh, next to last one is share my message with as many individuals as possible. And the last one is to put my message in front of the same people as many times as possible. So what the share my message with as many people, individuals as possible, it actually limits the number of times that we will share your message with a specific device, which means that we're going to try to spread more impressions or more times that we serve an ad to somebody across more devices. But if you're like, hey, I know who we're going after. I want to try to hit them over the head with my message as many times as we have. Maybe it's a smaller audience or maybe you just want to overload individuals with your message because that's part of your game plan. Then you would actually select put my message in front of the same people um, as many times as possible. If you have both selected, it actually does a balance of both and everything, uh, which really would be no different than if you had none of them selected as well too. But if you want to reach individuals as many, um, uh, share the message with as many individuals as you possibly can, you select this one. If you want to try to hit people over the head with your message as many times as possible, you select this one. If you have a healthy budget and you select this one and um, it's a small population but you have a good sized budget, you're essentially going to be doing both um, with this option. But if you have a limited budget and you want to try to reach as many people as possible, 
that's where this goal really comes into play. So play with around with them. You can always go back in and change them at any time. Now, the second section is super important. And for me, it's super exciting because we rolled out addressable geofencing in 2024. And the difference between the two um, is one, you upload your list and we grab the property lines. And the other one is you hand draw them. So I have a couple of pros and cons and information I'll throw on the screen. So addressable geofencing is going to be most ideal for targeting residential homes. And it is going to require, and it's also gonna be ideal whenever you have a big list of addresses that you wanna target. So, you know, you have to hand draw all the other ones for drawn geofences, but if you have a list of, let's say, 10,000 addresses, and you just wanna get them into the system quickly, addressable geofencing is really great for those larger lists. Targeting large lists of different properties, um, property uh, types is also the, a plus for that as well too. But what addressable geofencing really isn't ideal for is large buildings. So addressable geofencing is going to get the, the uh, property line of these addresses. So if it is a high rise building, a large apartment complex, where so you're really capturing a large space of, um, or, or the whole kind of property uh, uh, address. But what drawn geofences does, you can actually segment out specific locations of it. So if you only want a portion of a large building, drawn geofencing is actually going to be more going to be better. But if you're okay with going after the whole building, then then addressable geofencing is totally fine to include one of those addresses in your list. Outdoor spaces don't tend to have ideal um, addresses. So maybe a park or an event or something like that, or like an event space and everything, it would be better to use drawn than addressable. And then locations that don't match property lines or include multiple property lines. So ones that there's not really kind of clear cut um, uh, for that is that there's, um, there's a process of maybe like new homes that are built that, that they have the address out, but our system might not be able to match them 100%. And that's also one of the limitations that we have that I'll get to later, but I wanna jump ahead to it, is when you upload your list, we actually match it with UPS data, with uh, or not, uh, USPS data, sorry, as well as some other data points to confirm that this is an address that we can actually identify clearly. If we can't match it, which we have a pretty high match rate of, um, of about 90%, but if we can't match it, it won't be included in, in the list. And uh, this system will actually tell you uh, how many matches we've made of your particular list. The other thing that, that addressable isn't the most ideal for is shorter campaigns, like campaigns that are two weeks or less, um, because addressable geofencing as actually uses slightly different technology than drawn geofencing. And I have a write-up of it here on the screen that you can pause and read through. But in summary, it's using more than just GPS data. It's using um, a household identity graph that actually takes in a lot of different information to figure out what devices actually belong to what address. So it has more information that's kind of pumping in and it takes time to collect that and curate that and then also serve ads to those individuals. Drawn geofences as well too should require a longer period of time and the longer you have a geofencing campaign, the better. Geofencing campaigns really are ideal for dripping on this audience that you really wanna go after for probably three, six, 12 months, an ongoing basis and everything. But there is value in shorter campaigns as well too. Limitations of addressable is you have to have a minimum of at least 50 matched addresses. Again, we can't match all of them. The system automatically does that, but in order for us to run a campaign, you have to match at least 50 addresses, but your address list can actually go up to a million. So a pretty substantial uh, upload list that you can do. There's no personal information. We don't save any other information. It's all actually, once it's uploaded, gets uh, completely confidential. There's more information about this in our terms and conditions, but there's no personal information. Uh, and we do have some limitations as well too, as how you can utilize addressable geofencing uh, in a um, appropriate way for privacy reasons and legal reasons as well too. Um, but there's no information that, that we have that's gonna be personal and we don't save that, even the address information as well too, because it gets converted into a cryptid um, ID. Uh, you must upload with a CSV file. If you don't upload in the right way, the system can't not accept it uh, and everything. And we do have a template when you get to that sections. And then it must be within the uh, United States. 
And you also obviously, like I said, must adhere to all laws and privacy regulations as well too. For drawn geofences, this is really ideal for targeting customers at like retail location, parks, automotive dealerships, banks, um, parking areas, event facilities, publications, or parts of large facilities. Um, it could be a shopping mall that you're like, I just want to target the restaurant that's in the shopping mall. And you can kind of hand draw on exactly where that location is. It's not as ideal for residential targeting. Neighborhoods, yes, those are those are good, especially if you're including roadways and stuff like that. And then campaigns that are shorter than three weeks um, are are also not ideal. This also has a curation time as as well too. Again, addressable geofencing. Um, you know, you want it to be at least two weeks long. With with drawn geofences, you want it to be at least three weeks long. Ideally, best practice is that you're going to be running campaigns for longer than that. But I also understand that there's some campaigns where it's like, hey, if I'm just reaching people for a little bit of time, that makes sense for whatever I'm trying to promote. This technology uses GPS data. It does cross-reference with Wi-Fi data when it's available as well too, but it doesn't have as nearly as many data points because there's less information about the specific locations that we're targeting than a residential property or an a address that we can plug in like a business or, or a residential area that can actually tie uh, more data points to the devices that are within that area. So it might not collect as many as any as many devices as addressable. This also must be done in the U.S. or Canada in this case, and we must have collected devices. Um, they have to have GPS turned on. Ten percent of phones don't have GPS turned on, so automatically we're missing out on them. Uh, but there's a lot of instances where people will say, hey, allow you to use my location for this website or this app. A lot of things in America and in Canada where it kind of triggers people to turn GPS on. So about 90% of phones have it turned on. But there's other things with advertising space of like, you know, not being able, like having ad blockers on or something like that that can interfere with the collection. But we do collect people at these locations and cross-reference that data with other data points to try to ensure that they are the right kind of people because they've been at the right location. Uh, but GPS is one of the key things. It must be turned on for these devices. Wi-Fi is nice because we do look at, hey, if it's connected to Wi-Fi and we track them with the GPS and those two things match, the Wi-Fi router and the server are kind of on the same location and everything, then that's a thumbs up. We'll be able to collect that. But sometimes, especially with businesses, the internet connection is actually routed maybe to a different offsite location where the IP address is pulling from. In those cases, that can actually interfere with a geofencing campaign. Same thing even at a residential kind of standpoint too, where Wi-Fi, because it's operating as a secondary checkpoint, it adds another layer to prevent people from being collected in a, in a way. So it can be something that is a limitation for that. However, the nice thing with drawn geofences is you're definitely reaching people who have been at that, sp that specific location. You just aren't going to be reaching all people at that location. And addressable is the same way, but addressable tends to be a little bit more uh, inclusive with the devices that it's able to collect. And then also this must adhere to the laws and regulations of the different privacy guidelines that are out there. So once you have these selected, you just hit sit next and it automatically saves it for you as well too. Um, once you get to a certain point, you will be locked in into addressable or in uh, geofencing as well too, because the system needs to kind of confirm that that's going to be the same thing. And you cannot mix and match in the same campaign addressable and drawn geofences as well too. But if you're like, hey, I really love this addressable geofence, but I'd also a campaign that I set up, but I'd also like to do it as a drawn geofence as well too. That's not a problem. In the dashboard, you'll be able to actually copy of the campaign over just like you would for or copying a display campaign to an OTT. You'll be able to copy an addressable to geofencing and you'll just have to update those different targeting parameters and, uh, and draw your fences or upload your list as well too. All right, I hope to see you on the next video to explain a little bit more about each of these different things as you continue through your campaign setup.